So on, on with the spooky show. Two mediums, or is it, is it two media? They'll soon be materializing to help us delve into the forbidden. But now, two men who've been scaring the liver and lights out of readers and cinema goers for ages. One goes in for titles like The Book of Blood, and the other Haunted, or The Rats. I'll personally be surprised not to find the pair of them decomposing before our very eyes. Clive Barker and James Herbert. <laughs> I'm worried about that girl. She looks as if she's a terrible case of indigestion. They said, they said she was going to be a vestal virgin. Vestal virgins, yeah, are, they dress so. in white. So, yeah. As Clive said, virgin only is ridiculous. Right. Exactly, with the, yes. Sorry. Almost wearing a frock, she was, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> yeah. And this is a family show. Right. And a particularly, a family show with you two fellas on, on Halloween. I hope the children are wrapped up warm. Well, what sort of gruesome things have you both written about over the years? Awful. But I can't read his stuff, it's too bad. You, mean, it's too gruesome. You're, you're, just, saying that. you're just saying that. Yeah. We, we do, we, we write some pretty uh, hairy stuff. But uh, it doesn't just appeal to uh, people like us, it, it's kids as well, particularly kids. Yeah, kids love to be scared, mm. don't yeah, they? Yeah, and also oh, yeah. a lot of women readers. There's a, I guess, uh, there were some figures I saw in America recently, about 60% of all horror f novels are, uh, are bought by women. Which I think is strange, because I, I, when I first started, I guess I thought that uh, the readers of this kind of stuff were young male adolescents. A lot of middle-aged ladies are out there reading this kind of stuff, gym stuff, my stuff, and having a good time with it. That's right. Isn't Where that do these ideas come from? Because it seems to me they're nightmarish. Yeah. They're the ultimate nightmare. You, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're oh, yeah. The very idea Fabulous. is sending you off. Into <laughs> well, what we do, we, our nightmares, we don't have nightmares when we go to sleep. Our nightmares are in the daytime. We put them down on paper, and that gets rid of these feelings for us. It's all there for us in the daytime. Yeah, also kids are doing like it babies. all the time. When you're when you're a kid, you're, you're playing in the play yard. You're playing monsters all the time. I mean, I well, I did. Well, we were. We were. We were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're pushing it. You're pushing it beyond the bounds that most people would want to take it. But it's still safe, right? It's like it's, it's still like going safe, on, a, yeah. on a ghost train ride. And, and in fact. They want us to do that for them. They want us to take it as far as we can go and drag them a little bit along the way. They can retreat, and we retreat as well before we go uh, to the ultimate. And I don't know well, yet what the ultimate is. Say to you, do you retreat? I don't think so. Uh, I think you go to the limits. I go to the, I've never censored myself. I've, the thing I've always said is, Everything I put in my books, I'll, I'll never say, no, Clive, you shouldn't say that. No, you forbid. I don't think you forbid yourself anything. No, I don't. I'm trying to be mild-mannered and family showish. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Never mind. It's Halloween. Everybody wants to get frightened out of their wits tonight. But describe your stories. I mean, I know they're different, but do they have a central theme? I mean, your ultimate aim is to frighten the living daylights out of everybody. That, that's part of it. That's, uh, we, we, we entertain. We want to frighten people. We're like the, the roller coaster, the Big Dipper. We, we have our various themes, uh, and, and it's usually good against evil. Sometimes we twist it and have evil against evil. But uh, usually, I think with Clive's and, and certainly with mine, there is some kind of moral tone there. Yeah, but also there's this whole thing about monsters. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a monster. I still do want to be a monster. It worked. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Boy. You come on with this guy, all he does is insult me. Um, the, uh, the whole thing about monsters is they do all kinds of things I want to do. I mean, they fly, they live forever, they're sexually irresistible. I mean, what's bad about this? I mean, tell me what's bad about but they, this. They kill, they, they chop. Yeah, people but what's up bad them? about it? I mean, <laughs> What's bad about it is you get a stake through your heart. At the end. Only, yeah. only if they catch Somebody you. Somebody does that to you. I, you I've warned them of this. I've warned them. <laughs> do you get people coming up to you going like that a lot? I get a lot. We, we get do that to a lot mail. of people. Yeah. We get strange people who come up to us and we virtually... Do you ever frighten yourselves? Clive frightens me and I hope I frighten him. No, he, no, you're only being nice. Does he really? Does yeah, he, oh, does he sure. yeah, and, and yeah. I think this is why I was saying before, I think he does push, I certainly push, I think the whole point is to say the things, the forbidden things, the taboo things. I was going to say, that's it. You yeah. push the nightmare to the end. Most people wake up before a nightmare gets really bad. But a safe nightmare is the best kind of nightmare, right? 
a kind of nightmare in which you can say, okay, I can read this book and any time I can put it down. It's like saying, I will, I will live this experience and have the chills, but finally, but, I'm still at home, yeah, I'm still the, reading the, the book. The worst nightmare is the one you don't wake up from. And I hope it never happens with one of our books, that somebody is so uh, influenced by it, the nightmare continues. Okay, for one night, that's, that's fine, but if it continues into weeks or a day or well, that's months... It. That could happen. I mean, the book is, is probably the most powerful... Reading is the most powerful thing for your imagination. Well, the, the idea yeah, can stay it's in It's so your much head. more therapeutic to yeah. actually have it, it said, it, isn't it's, it? It's a relief. And we've found that the, uh, the people that it would affect, they don't read books anyway. They'll watch video nasties, but yeah, they, they'll they'll, watch their brain can't get round words. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you scare people, then? I mean... You think but of the very simple things. It's always mm -hmm. the very simple things. Have they been based in reality? Yeah, my, my favourite yeah. ghost stories are in the daytime. It's a bright, sunny, sunny day and something happens. It doesn't have to be a thunderstorm or mist. It's, it's got to be real for me and very mundane even. And you, you, you take the audience, the reader, along with you and then you invite them to take a mental leap into the horror. See, I don't mind the thunderstorms once in a while. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Do, I'll do the thunderstorm routine. I'll do anything as long as it works. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I have, have no shame. I, <laughs> whatever it takes, I'll do. Um, and, and I think what's important only is that you give the reader something they haven't seen before. You know, that, one of the yeah. things about the routine we just saw, which is terribly entertaining, is it's kind of kitsch and camp now. Mm. Uh, you couldn't do that. We wouldn't do that in one of our stories, in one of our books. Or we movie. could have danced with Gary. Oh, it would have been great. No, we would have been great. The backing singers, we could have <laughs> had an extra two backing singers. We'd yeah. have been great at that. But the, 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 the trick camp, for no. us is to find a different things to yeah. do each time. Because yeah. how far can you go? How much has been done before? Um, I've done a lot before, and Clive has now. Um, how far can you, you, you find something? So you're something always different. looking for another boundary, aren't you? Yes, the we are. The parents, I've got to always. say that it comes to us. Uh, we never, well, I don't seek, it just seems to. Does it spill over it. into your real life, into your own life? Of course it does. We live in a graveyard and we. Uh, oh, now you're just saying my, that. My, my children are <coughs> Igor and Mongo. Yes, it's. <laughs> he's lying, he's lying. <laughs> no, I'm not so sure. <laughs> what happens? I mean. If I'm in a study working all day, I'm James Herbert. The moment I put the pen down and leave the study and lock the door, I revert to Jim Herbert. I thought you could say I turn into Dracula. <laughs> 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 it's like Superman and Clark Kent. I suddenly become a wimp. I, uh, I don't do that. I'm, I'm he's doing Clive it all, Barker the all the time. He's James Herbert this is, all the time. I'm James Herbert all the time. You can be Clive Barker, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't see that distinction. My imagination is working overtime all the time. And all I'm doing when I'm sitting in front of the, uh, of the desk writing is I'm putting that stuff on the page, but it's working all the time. I don't see the distinction. Do you live in a macabre um, environment? I did a photo session this afternoon and <clears throat> with an American photographer, and she came around and she said, what have you got? You know, what about the props? And I said, props? Have I got props? Out came the skulls, out came the bones, of course. I mean, I love that stuff. It's part of the, it's part of the tools of the trade. It's like being a chemist, you're gonna have some uh, chemicals around, right? The same Do photographer actually took me out uh, two days ago, but she took me to a graveyard. Yeah, right. <laughs> your, your own living room, I've gotta to go to a graveyard. <laughs> well, my living room looks like a graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I have this. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Do you have bad dreams? No. Yeah, um, yeah I, I had bad dreams. I had uh, one last night, one the night before. But I used them, you see. The last, the last book I did, Haunted, came from a dream. And it wasn't a nightmare. It, it was just a bad dream about ghosts. I woke up, and in that sort of transient stage between sleeping and waking, the story continued. So it was useful for me. I wish I had more bad dreams. You don't have them at all, but... No, well, they're all on the page. I did... I don't, the Weave World. Weave thing, World. That, is that... That's, that's more a fantasy. fantasy, but yeah. it's got dark... I mean, it's, it's suitable for Halloween in the sense that it's, it's, it's got a lot of, uh, of dark material in it. I can't ever get through an entire story without something weird going on. Weave World is a, is a big fantasy novel, but the whole thing finally is about the imagination. What we're both writing about is stuff that isn't going to happen. That's the whole point. We're entering a world in which you, you're, the dreams and the nightmares interweave all the time. Now, I find that fascinating because I think I'm healthier for that. And I, I, I meet my fans as Jim meets his, and I think on the whole, they are, with the few that you have to do that to, the most part, they are very well-mannered, articulate, healthy, 
well-balanced people. Yeah, because we're, we're releasing their regressions as well, as well as our own. So you're really performing the function of, of psychiatrists, I think so, perhaps. yes. yes. I think so. we're, 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 we're cheap analysts, is what we are. <laughs> I, you know, I thought for an awful <laughs> moment, I thought for an awful moment you were doing it for the money. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> no way. Yes, it's silly, God. silly, I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. Yes, uh, I'm such cynicism, yeah, such sorry. cynicism. Yeah. Right. Look, do you believe in ghosts? I do. Clive doesn't. I don't know. No. I think it's, uh, I think we I think when we're dead, we've got better things to be doing with our time than hanging around the living. Yeah. I think we're off. I think a new adventure begins. You know, Pete, in Peter Pan, it says death will be an awfully big adventure. I think we're off on something new. But it depends what you mean by ghosts. Now, I don't see that sort of thing as being ghosts. I don't believe you hang around haunting people. But there is something that goes on. You become a spirit or you, 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 you float around the ether. I think there's something happening. I we just don't know what, you know. Have you ever come across it? Makes you think that. It, like, yeah, quite a few times things have happened. And uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people uh, say I'm psychic. A lot of psychics say I'm psychic. And I am, because I can tell you in the next question you're going to ask me. <laughs> Why do you write horror, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Clive Barker and James Abbott, they're going to stay with you. Okay. So I'm going to ask the two chaps to hang on to the pendulum as we delve further into the pit. So adjust your auras while you're at it. This is the eve of all saints, an evening when the spirits of the dead visit the earth. Several of them are in the audience tonight. <laughs> so it can't be, can't be more fitting a night to welcome two ladies who claim to be in touch with the spirits. Are there any here tonight in this old music hall theater? The ghost of George Roby, maybe, who trod these very boards, or Barry Grayson. <laughs> maybe, maybe your granny. Oh no, she's sitting with you. I never... <laughs> Let's meet Carmen Rogers and Marion Dampier Jeans. <laughs> Ladies, welcome. Now you're both, you're both mediums, media. You've, you've never met before? No, we haven't, no, we as haven't. a matter of fact. No. So, uh, tell me how both or either of you get in touch with the other side. Well, we just stand up on a platform and we get the communicator, the, the person who has died, who will give us information and we shall pass it on to the person who it, um, it belongs to. That's it. Is it? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Piece of right. cake. Absolutely. In effect, yes. Mm. Um, you were away. saying that uh, ghosts only, uh, the spirits of the dead only come on Halloween. Halloween. They are here at all, all times. The time. Are they here? Yes. 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 How do you know? Oh, well, we can sense them around. Well, I tried to read a couple of the gravestones over yes. there, but I couldn't. I wonder where <laughs> you got them from. <laughs> well, I hate, those are not real gravestones. Oh, I see. No. Ah, I see like that. It's the magic of television. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cardboard gravestones. Oh, well. Yeah. well, so I hope that hasn't put you off. But many, of course, many people say it's nonsense. <coughs> well, everyone who dies will pass into the world, this world of spirit. Everyone. Without exception. You seem very certain that we, don't, we won't just decompose. The body's decomposed, but the spirit lives on. Mm -hmm. And that is the part that we communicate with, and uh, we're able to get the information that they were living at such and such a time, their names perhaps, and it gives great comfort to those who are um, in an audience or where we may be speaking to them privately, and gives them the sense, the knowledge, that they will also live after they die. Yeah. And it's a great, not only a comfort, but it's a, a wonderful thing to know this. Yes. Do you believe in this? No. <laughs> I, I, I Sorry. do, I do, but I, I'm not sure it's quite the way you say it is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we actually know too much about this. 
We can make guesses, and I'm sure you're in your own mind you're very certain of what you do. In my own mind, it's in actual fact. It's, yeah, come to some of our churches. It's a fact for you, and yes. maybe some of the people that you 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 deal with. Yeah. I'm not sure a couple of old cynics like us it would. Uh, That's what the old is. Well, it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> you, you'll still pass into the world of spirits, spirits yeah. whether well, you're right. a cynic or not. Let, let's let's assume that uh, we go on. I don't argue that we go on. Why do we hang around? That's the bit I don't understand. We don't hang around. Well, do, do certain people hang around and others not? Some can, yes. If like waiting for a bus or...? Oh, you can if you're fed up walking. Yes. You just hang for a bus, no. And are they like bad guys? Are they like... Uh... That's good and bad That's guys. good and bad. Yes. But why do we call them back? We, don't. Going we, back? Don't. we never no. have called them back ever. Well, don't no. people come to you and say, listen, I want no. to talk no. to Graham? No. 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 no, no, no. Every time we do a sitting or we do a, a church work, it's completely ex it's an experimentation. We do not know what's going to come through. We do not know what to say. We don't know who's in the congregation. We don't know anything. But so you, are you saying then that the, the spirits or whatever they chooses whoever yes. they see in the audience? That's right. You but are they relatives? Or? They can be relatives, relatives or friends. friends anything. The big question, the big question about all of this. Why did the things that they, they, they reveal or, or mm -hmm. not reveal, the way I look tribute. at it, mm -hmm. why are they trivial? Yes. Why is it? We want to know about the meaning well, of life. Um, know about Do they know use, about the meaning of I life use, up there? I use the um, I analogy the of, um, oh, for instance, if Einstein returned, all right, now, um, if, I, if he gave me the uh, thing for the relativity, I wouldn't understand what he was talking about. But if it happened, he happened to be my uncle, and he took me somewhere that was, um, I remembered so, so much and one loved it. And he reminded me of that, the fact that we went to this such and such place. Now, that may be trivial to you, but it wouldn't be trivial to me. Can I ask why so many mediums are women? Because it's the more sensitive area. Well, we're women are more sensitive. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe in it. No, seriously, though, aren't no. most mediums women? It is a feminine um, principle. A, yes, yeah? but we have got yes. loads of men. Yes. I mean, we have got loads. I have a lot. You see, we have got hundreds of mediums. You've got lots of men. Oh, yeah. There are lots That's of male mediums. That's what you do it. <laughs> there are lots of male mediums. You see, there's an awful lot of charlatans in the game, I have yes. to say. Absolutely. I, agree. I mean, the, the, in the papers, you will find uh, mediums saying, um, Dear Charlie, I've been in touch with Vera, and she says not to worry, she's fine on the other side. Right. Now, it not, uh, that nobody not can as it should be. possibly no. believe that. No. <clears throat> no. no, but take it, what, what you're actually doing is you're following on the religious belief that the soul lives on after That's the body right. dies. That's correct. Right. Right. Now, if the soul lives on, and some of these people come back and talk to you, mm -hmm. why have they never told you of the beatific vision? Why has nobody mentioned, why do we never see God mentioned? The one thing we want to hear is, yeah. have they seen God? I think you, it, Have they seen heaven? Yes. What's it like? Heaven is what you make it. Oh, yeah, but what's God like? Well, God is an energy, is a, is a mind, but that's creative not much, mind. If I have to say, that's not much of a beatific vision. We're being told by, by all religions that when we die, yes. we go to heaven, we will be rewarded by a vision of God. Why haven't they come back and told you about that? because they haven't reached that point where they have reached God. So they are well around. So they're, so they're in purgatory. Right. They're not hanging around here. They're not hanging around. No, 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 hanging not. around. They no, have but they, they haven't to gone do. on. They haven't, they haven't they gone on to heaven They do progress. Yet. Heaven do. is um, on several levels. Yes. Yes. Who told you that? I like this. We've had this community. Well, We've had to it's like a, like a high rise. It, it yeah. could well be. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the lowest level. The heavenly like. high rise. Absolutely. Let's Why not bring Prince Charles into it, please. <laughs> Why not? Do you yeah. know how they progress? What they do to actually get on? One becomes aware, floor. just in the same way as we learn and experience things here, and we become aware that this is right. This is the way to be, the way to go, and we then become aware that this is a truth. Just as um, any religion will say, you have to become aware of that truth but, um, and why, that knowledge. Why don't they tell you that? Why they do. They, they do. do. They tell, tell you the way what they, to do. They don't, no, no, no one can tell you what, what to, to do. do. You, have to mean, you have to learn, learn your yourself. Own. Absolutely. Does, does this mean you're not scared of death at all? No. No. But does this mean that, that you're, okay. you're only meeting, or uh, the only people coming back are people <clears throat> who are in the mid-stage, haven't, haven't reached nirvana? Well, I mean... It is more difficult for someone who's gone that direction to be able to get close to this rather low place. Right. But why do only, as you said, why do only a few of them come back? Well, Wouldn't you think no, everybody no, wants to get back, back and get in touch with, with the loved ones they've left behind? They do. That's all of them? 
Who knows? Not all of them, because no. there's some people who wouldn't accept uh, the fact that they're communicating anyway, and they would think they were from the devil. This is the problem we do, have. Do you have to yes. want it to communicate? No, then? no, not it necessarily. Can happen. It can and happen. I mean, you at this moment, this place could, it could be well filled with spirit personalities mm -hmm. who would love to communicate okay. with people out there. Can you sense any of them? At the moment, I'm arguing. <laughs> well, pause, <laughs> for, movie, pause, pause, pause for a moment, and I mean, yes. I mean, let's not make it a cheap jack thing. No, but no, no. pause for a moment and think. Can you can you sense anything? Well, uh, the one thing I was aware of uh, was a man who was linking in here, and I think perhaps his daughter may well be here. And I kept hearing the name Maggie, and as though somebody here may well have the name of Maggie or Margaret, and that there would be someone here um, would like to be able to communicate. But um, is Margaret the, Thatcher's in. Not tonight? Maggie. Not that Maggie. <laughs> um, is there a Margaret? Uh, the same. Of, the name of um, the Brown. It's an ordinary name. Would somebody be out there who would have the surname Brown? I know it's an ordinary name. Brown. Don't be afraid to stand up. Yeah, or put your hand up or something. Brown. Yeah. Is there someone there? Somebody just Over there. pointed up there called Brown. Was there? Yes, my name is Green. No, no, I know, you see, this is the thing. The first thing, I mean, all right, because it's an ordinary name, suddenly it becomes uh, very trivial, but I mean, people do have the surname Brown. Yeah. But there's, uh, this man has not been in spirit very long, but he, it's as though he either had hoped that his daughter would be here, that he'd have the opportunity to communicate the fact. And I've got the month of March connected with him, possibly with his passing. Now. All right, so nobody will answer up, but that's not unusual um, no. with people who are We're not going to let you out until you answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you will find out if you pass the North London, because mm -hmm. I suddenly get a very strong connection with North London. You're working as a tandem You're now. You're same working same together. Yes, we're not suddenly getting it together. We can both do that. Um, yes. The ethereal we're different medium. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Right. Um, you must get a lot of cynical people. Of course. Does it make? Does it put you off? Not at all. No, not no. really. We're used to this, so we get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, the, the whole thing is that um, spirit lives on. They communicate. They want you to know that they are still. Um, caring, loving, and uh, close to you if you need their, their, their support. They don't make, they're not there all the time. Do they have a comeback if you don't want them there? Oh, yes. There are some who do. Oh, yes. I mean, people yes. do get haunted, really. <laughs> there's, many, there's many embarrassing situations, yes. I can tell you, when you're actually are working, and uh, you suddenly get told details, and mm -hmm. um, particularly me, because I, I happen not to be English, neither. <laughs> I happen to be Danish, and... Uh, my English is terrible. But well, that makes a difference. Though. Very much indeed, because I happen to come out and say what, exactly what I hear, where perhaps Carmen mm. will sort of wrap it in a little. <laughs> I don't, so I just come up with it. I mean, has anybody heard about patient being a virgin? <laughs> well, it is with me. It wasn't a virtue, it was a virgin. <laughs> but there's many times where you suddenly have Suffers a Suffers in translation, yes. yes. Right. I'm afraid on this, on this nice, a, a night of ghosts and goodies and all the rest, we have to leave it there. But I want to thank you all. It's been very nice to thank see you. you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.